But I would always ask the question, why do we need a literal temple to have a literal kingdom? Because we do have a literal kingdom at the end of the book of Revelation, we don't have a temple. So I, 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 don't, I don't really see why we need one now. Second thing I want to hit on is the New Jerusalem and the eschatological temple. Now, we've talked about the temple before with New Testament temple imagery, how it's used of Jesus' body and individual believers and corporate believers and so on and so forth. But we're going to, we're going to revisit that a little bit to comment on the New Jerusalem. The scholars have long noted that Ezekiel 40 through 48, which is the famous temple vision of Ezekiel, contains elements that can be read as an architectural plan that makes literal sense. So it has that, that in it. But it also has elements that make no literal sense. Okay, things like there's no roof. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to build a, a real temple with no roof because it will be defiled when birds, you know, poop on it when, when they're flying over and other, other dirt comes in. You don't do that. That's not the way you do, you know, a, a literal temple enclosure. Even the tabernacle, you know, was covered, you know, with, with tarps and so on and so forth. And the, the Jerusalem temple in Solomon's day, it had a roof. That's gone in Ezekiel 40 through 48. Also, you have certain tabernacle temple pieces of furniture, like the Ark of the Covenant, that are not in Ezekiel 40 through 48. Again, there are just things that sort of defy thinking of it as, as you know, a literal building. There's some things that make you think that, other things that make you think the opposite. So scholars are divided on, on the meaning of the passage and how you know, it would be fulfilled on my take, which again is not going to be a surprise, is I believe that the future temple is and was and, and was intended to be by Ezekiel, was Jesus in the body of Christ, the body of Jesus, who, which is us, because this is how the New Testament describes temple. This is the New Testament temple talk. Um, you know, and it explains a number of things. You know, when you get into the earthly New Jerusalem, at the end of the book of Revelation, there is no temple. So I, as I've asked before, if, if Ezekiel 40 through 48 is supposed to be a third temple, if that's the, the point of it, what happened to it? Because when you get to the end of days, there is no temple. So what happened to it? You can't say it was destroyed because in Revelation 20, when the forces of evil and the armies surround Jerusalem, they're defeated. It never says that, that they invade Jerusalem. So what happened to it? And again, my, my position is that that isn't the point. The point is that the presence of God in the body of Christ, which is us. And then that gets magnified, glorified into the new Jerusalem where God is there with his family and there is no need for a temple because he is the source you know, of, of light and, and the intercessor, the Messiah. So I would ask the question, just if you're interested in prophecy, I mean, I, I believe that, that, that there will be an earthly kingdom. I believe the nations were surrendered in real time at Babel. They were judged and they're gonna be reclaimed in real time on the earth too. Uh, I don't like the word you know, millennialism to describe that for a number of reasons. It's too short for one. But I would always ask the question, why do we need a literal temple to have a literal kingdom? Because we do have a literal kingdom at the end of the book of Revelation and we don't have a temple. So I, 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 don't, I don't really see why we need one. Now, you know, the way history plays out in our own lifetimes, you know, we, Jerusalem may, may get a temple, I don't know. If they do, I don't think it's the fulfillment of any prophecy, but you know, I'd be in favor of it because it's their land and they ought to be able to worship in a temple if they want to. Um, I just don't see Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled that way, again, because of what, what the New Testament does with it. So again, my reasons, New Testament temple talk. There are other things in Ezekiel, again, that, that, that sort of really argue for this. For instance, if you go to Ezekiel, the glory departs in three stages. Ezekiel 9, Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel 11. By the time it's in Ezekiel, you're in Ezekiel 11, the, the glory is out of the temple. It's still in the land, but it's out of the temple. And so the fact that it's still in the land gives you this presumption that, that the Lord wants to be there. The Lord wants to return, you know, to dwell with his people in a temple. But of course, in, in Ezekiel, you're going to have the temple destroyed and so on and so forth. When does the glory return? Let's go to Ezekiel 43. Again, this is right in the middle of this temple you know, passage. 
that everyone loves to talk about. Ezekiel 43, I think I had verse 5 there, let me check, verses 5 through 9, yeah. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. So there you have the glory returning in Ezekiel's temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking out of the temple. He said, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. There I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. And the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings nor their whoring and their dead bodies or their kings of the high places. By setting their threshold on my threshold and their doorpost besides my doorpost, with only a wall between me and them, they have defiled my holy name by their abominations, so on and so forth. So the Lord says, when the glory comes back, it'll be, key word here, forever. I would suggest to you that if a temple gets rebuilt today, and there is no temple at the end of the book of Revelation, that like something happens to that temple, that's in defiance of this passage. But if you take the temple as the new Jerusalem, the body of Christ and the new Jerusalem, it is forever. It will have no end. So again, I'm just trying to relay my thinking on, on why I, I take the, the position that I do. The glory is tied to the new temple, the new sanctuary. And that, link, that again means when the glory returns, you, you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent with the way you think about it, you know, the future temple idea or the, the fulfillment of Ezekiel 40 and 48 with the glory terminology. Again, that's typically excluded from discussion, but it needs to be included because the text includes it. 